hello Lee, great to see you and um, thank you for taking time out of, of anyone who follows you on, on LinkedIn or is aware of, of what you do. A very, very busy schedule. I didn't know if you'd be at an airport or at a seminar when you chat to us, but thank you for taking time out. No, it's an absolute pleasure to join you, Rob. So I think I have an idea of what you do, but the, there's there's lots of, of, of areas of your expertise. So how do you describe the, the work that you do and, and uh, you know what you're what you're good at? I suppose the best way to describe it, Rob, is I, I run a wellbeing company founded two and a half years ago. And a lot of the things that we do are around how do we make wellbeing inclusive, accessible and effective for organisations. And elements of that are around consulting, elements that are around training, some of it's around technology. And we kind of go into companies and take them on that journey, partner with them, kind of demystify it a little bit and actually make it so it can make a massive difference for their teams. Yeah. And have you found that is, uh, for once of a better phrase, an easier sell since the pandemic, where I think everyone at every level was was tested on an emotional level? Has that made what you do, it's always been relevant, but relevant in the eyes of the purse string holders and the people who want to look after the teams? I definitely think that, you know, the pandemic really shone a light on just how important health is, not just from a like a physical and a mental health perspective, but also the more social well-being aspects to being connected, to being part of something, having those times when we come together. And I think that as companies start to realise just how important it is, what's really driving uh, our company forward now is around talent retention, acquisition and attraction and being able to really bring something that makes people feel like they are part of the company's journey, that there are the stru support structures in there to help them if they are struggling and starting to create spaces within organisations where if people are having a bit of a challenging time and there's so many different things impacting people, whether it's the cost of living crisis, you know, whether it's ha the health of other people, um, a space where they can actually feel that there is a bit of support, people are going to listen and they're not going to be judged based on the things that they decided to disclose. And, yeah. you know, as companies create those spaces, uh, it does make a massive difference because people then feel like they can be a bit more authentic. They can bring themselves to work. And actually that, you know, work is going to be a net positive for them at the end of the day. And uh, from from your side and, you know, you, your team running a business, what's the biggest challenge that, that you face in doing the, the, you know, the work that you do? Is it, uh, a base level as a business, it's profit and loss. You know, if if you if there's more money in the bank at the end than when you started, great. But for you guys, how how do you mobilise that, and what are the things that cause you the headaches? Um, some of the real challenges, Rob, are companies want things to be nice and quick and nice and snappy and very you know one and done. But the truth is, this kind of structural, cultural, climate based well being and inclusion work that we do, it's a longer term project. There's elements of change and transformation in organisations and how they're structured and how they work. So it's that investment of time because, you know, there are quick wins that any company can take and things that they can do quite quickly without much budget to make a real difference. But for that sustainable, you know, longer term evolution, it does take time. And obviously you need those companies involved to actually be able to commit to that time commit the resourcing and have leadership on the same page because yeah. a massive part is if the leaders are not really engaged then will they keep signing off those budgets will they keep role modeling those behaviors in the organization will they even create the spaces for people to be able to actually open up or will it still be how it's always been yeah and um who looks after you and your guys? Because you'll probably be exposed at times to, you know, good times and you'll see bad times in a business when people are stressed or a breaking point or uh, that must take a toll on, on you know, on you and, and, and the, the team and the people you work with. So how do you keep yourselves sort of safe and, you know, and right. in, in, in top shape mentally with the work you do? So, you know, sometimes people say there is no well-being for well-being, right? Uh, I mean, from a, from a professional perspective, most of us have supervision that we actually need from a professional perspective and our continued education. We do quite a lot of things that involve not talking about well-being. So when we do come together as a team, it's like, right, the, there are numerous things that we're not allowed to talk about. Well-being, inclusion, let's just go and have some fun. And yeah. a big thing for us is outdoors. 
just being outdoors allows us to just disconnect. Uh, but it's all those little things about how you come together as a team. You know, we create stuff together. There's a lot of passion for the work that we do. Uh, but also, you know, there's a there's a big thing around we have to live around our values, which is actually, yeah. you know, living and breathing what we suggest that client should do. And if kind of we turn up and we're tired and, you know, we're weary and kind of getting up off our chair in a like a lopsided way because we've not been... It, it, it doesn't really propagate the message about what we're about. So, yeah, I think for me, it's it's we do look after each other. We do check on up on each other. Uh, we're all kind of in it together. And I think, you know what, Rob, the feeling of belonging yeah, is probably the biggest thing. And I think that's such a driver of being well. It's when you feel you're on a journey with other people, you don't feel like you're on your own. And I think it's when you feel like you're on your own that you struggle the most with your well-being. Yeah, just one, you, you, you touched on there, Lee, about, you know, support and being part of something. Now, I know from, I've got friends who are running businesses and some are, more successful than others, whatever success means. But a common thread, and whether we're looking at multi-million pound companies or 100 grand companies, is that the the people at the top feel that, that, that they have to be rock solid and everyone else is part of this team. Um, and whether that's a right you know, uh, observation or not, that's how they feel. Is that a common thing? Do you find, again, I'm not looking for any client confidentiality breaks, but do, do you, is this a common thing that people... Uh, Again, I don't want to say at the top from a hierarchy, but someone who's, you know, n names under the door, as it were, above the door, that they feel this extra pressure and often feel they can't show any sign of what might be perceived as weakness. Yeah, so, I mean, I think, we, you know, we've spoken about this before, haven't we, Rob? And, you know, we, we, we kind of come into contact with those other founders, entrepreneurs, CEOs and MDs in our network. We have those conversations. We have those moments where... All of a sudden, we can actually go take the take the leadership badge off and just be humans. Um, and actually, when you sit down and, and you have a chat, and you do realise that there's a, there's a lot of stress, a lot of responsibility. Every decision that you make impact people's livelihoods. Everything that yeah. you do is being watched and monitored and analysed, and that makes it very difficult to open up. And there are many people in that leadership position who actually do feel quite lonely feel yeah. like they are actually struggling don't have anywhere to express that because what will our investors think what will our stakeholders think what might exactly. my clients think do they think that you know if i say i'm struggling it's gonna impact the decisions that i make impact the choices impact the quality of our work the direction that we're traveling in and you know sometimes it's really hard when you're leading people to actually take a step back and lead your own well-being because you just feel like you've got a responsibility to others that's bigger than a responsibility to yourself. And it's a really difficult balance to find. But one of the most important things for me is having a group of leaders who we can go and do things that are not sat in a boardroom, but actually right. doing things where we all come down to no one is a leader in that group. We're all just humans having a good old chinwag. Lee, I know I, I, academically that, that you're supremely qualified to do the work you do but there's a lot that comes from you know from from here as well so what's your journey what's got you to you know here here now um and you know i know you are you, as the, the company very successful but unless people buy into this as well um, so how have you how have you you know achieved that and and what's what's giving you the the armor plating i think as well as the knowledge to do what you do yeah, and I think, I mean, just to run through it, I grew up on a council estate in Bolton in the 1980s. I was the first one in my extended family to university, but really struggled with my mental health and ended up dropping out. Spent a year recovering, went back and graduated, and then went off on a bit of a journey. Uh, I went into corporate finance thinking I might have a profession, but right. lost that in the recession. Uh, then worked in local government and started a video game company. Grew that across Europe in my early 20s again massively stressed massively worried you know really struggling at times because of all the responsibility and a lack of life experience uh, and then something happened my immune system failed I ended up not being able to walk and then I spent a year recovering physically and during that time I kind of had a lot of time to reflect on what was really important what impact I could make uh, and decided that actually you know 
I could do something with these qualifications that I have, with the story and the journey that I've been through, got back on my feet. And yeah, after a period of being a stay-at-home dad for a while, which shaped me as a human, a bit more academic, you know, background and expertise to add, decided that I'm going to go and do something which empowers the health of others in an inclusive and effective way and wanting to just spread a message. And I've also been on that journey, very honest about my mental health challenges, honest about the impacts of redundancy and honest about, you know, what it's like as a young man to suddenly lose your physicality, lose your mobility and lose your independence. And, you know, I've, I've talked openly about going to therapy. I am very transparent and that's not for everyone. But I do yeah. feel like, for me, it's quite important that I'm able to share my journey, especially as a black male, because, again, there are so few role models in the space who are actually, you know, sharing both the great things and the challenges as well. Yeah. Wow. It's, um, do, do you think, well, I, I think certainly, you, as you say, life experiences and going through these journeys, if you're working with someone who, you know, at any stage in, in life, you, is you almost tell them that these experiences are going to be ammunition for you for, for, for later life? Because I think that and the things that you think are going to kill you, as they say, makes you stronger. But um, that sounds like exactly what's happened to you in, in your case. Yeah, and I think the one thing, Rob, is adversity doesn't discriminate. At yeah. some point, you are going to face some adversity in your life. For me, it was a little bit younger. But I now look and say it didn't happen to me. It happened for me. It allowed me to stop, reflect, accept that things aren't always great but think about what i can influence and what i can control and by having that acceptance that yeah suddenly i couldn't walk and at first i was like this ain't fair you know i'm not happy uh but then i realized i just need to accept what's happened and that'll help me over recovery and every pitfall that i've fallen into i've managed to climb out and actually realize i'm stronger for the process of trying to climb out of the of the pit that i've fallen into um, yeah. And then you realise that life is going to be full of those potholes, uh, but actually, that's part of life. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't feel great if life was a flat line. In fact, it's a bit like your heartbeat. It's up and down, isn't it? If life yeah. was a flat line, you wouldn't be here. It happened for me, not to me. I think that's um, that's a, a, you know amazing way of of, of looking at it. Um, it's a shame we've only got one question left, just because of of of, uh, of of time, Lee. But we we do this with all our our chats, the elevator pitch, the chat in the lift. Someone gets in there of any stage of life, whether they're growing a business, they're starting a business, whatever, and they say, Lee, we've got thirty seconds in this lift. Give me one nugget that I'm going to take away with me to, um, you know, help me on my journey. What what would that one be from from you? Yeah, so. That one thing for me would be, as a leader, spend a little bit of time leading, spend a little bit of time in the business, a bit of time on the business, a bit of time on yourself, yeah. and then a bit of time steps out of yourself. Don't forget the out of yourself, because if you spend that little bit of time outside of yourself, what it helps you to do is just see how you're turning up in life. Please, it's been a joy to, to chat to you. We'll put links to the, the business, but I'll, yeah, obviously just a quick, Plug if any, anyone who's watching this who who and I'm sure there will be a lot of people with what you've you've said about those challenges it will resonate with what will be a good ne- next step to to get in you know to get in touch with you or you know a next uh, a direction for them get in contact with us at Essentialize we can really advise you on what we can do if you want to do well being properly we're the people to do it because we do proper well being um, and also you know anything that you're thinking we're struggling to attract and retain talent. That's really where our specialism lies. We're able to help you get the right people through the door and get your good people staying. So get in contact and yeah, we will create something just for you. Wonderful, Lee. Thanks so much again for your time. It's been a joy and thank you for all the amazing work that uh, that you do. Pleasure, Rob.